Greetings and once again, it's our joy to be able to journey with you through this week as we contemplate on this season of Christmas and what it means to us. And we are focusing on this theme on God becoming a man. And I want to point our attention today to the divine incarnation that took place when God became a man. In John chapter 1 verses 1 and 14, which are familiar verses to many of us, the scriptures tell us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the Bible is telling us something very powerful here in John chapter 1. First of all, it tells us that the eternal word, who was God, the, the eternal word, part of the Godhead, was with God and was God, was part of the Godhead, that this eternal word became flesh and dwelt among us. So why did this eternal word have to be embodied in flesh, become a man. See, like we mentioned yesterday, there was no one who could be the savior of this fallen human race. No other man could become a savior of mankind or humankind, the human race. Because every man was born of Adam was born under sin, Satan, and death. And only God, if He were to embody Himself and become one of us, incarnate, take on our form, our features, live in the limitations of humanity, only He, this one, could represent us. He had to be able to represent us completely in order to be our substitute so that he could be the one who would pay for the sins of this whole world. Every man born of Adam had his own sin to pay for. There had to be a man who didn't have his own sin to pay for and he then could be this complete substitute. And yet this had to be a man, a human person to represent us. So there were two things being addressed. One, there had to be a person, somebody part of this humanity, humankind. And yet this person had to be without sin, his own sin or any form of sin. And that is why the eternal word had to become incarnate as a man. And in the incarnation, he became one of the human race, a man, part of humankind. And yet, as we mentioned, he was not part of a fallen man. He was not part of sin, Satan, and death. He was very much man, but yet not under sin, Satan, and death. And so this eternal word who became flesh, who dwelt among us, could do two things. He could represent us completely and He could also be our substitute in entirety. The eternal Word becoming man, divine incarnation. Let's worship Him together for that. Lord Jesus, we worship You, we exalt You, that You who are with God, who was God, that You would become one of us to represent us, to identify with us, and to be our perfect substitute. We honor and worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.